Hello, is that the Hilton? Yes. Uh, it's uh, Blackburn Rover Seas here. I'm going to put about the promotion party I booked on the 5th of May. We might have to cancel it. Cancel? Why? Why? Because Blackburn Rovers need to get their act together, starting with a win against Oldham this weekend. We'll talk about that match and more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview this time, building up to the next cup final up against Oldham Athletic. We did lose the last cup final up against Plymouth Argyle, and we kind of blew it a little bit. We'll talk more about the Oldham game in just one second. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I keep me bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Uh, but yes, opportunity blown massively against Plymouth Argyle. Win that, and I know, I know it, the whole weekend just never panned out. Uh, Wigan won, Shrewsbury won, everything uh, that I was hoping to go wrong didn't. It all it just it just flip flopped and it went wrong for us, and we uh, we stumbled to get any. Well, we got nothing. Absolutely, we did. Not only did we get nothing, we looked absolutely worthless. We looked absolutely crap. So this is where Blackburn Rovers need to turn that around and actually come out guns blazing against Oldham Athletic. Anyway, let's talk more about the build-up to the match itself. It takes place at Ewood Park this Saturday, the 10th of February, 2018. Last season, Oldham Athletic finished 17th in the division. They currently find themselves 21st. Current top goal scorer is Yayan, Yayan Doyle, or Yoyan, Ian, Ian Doyle. Anyway, he got 13 goals. Richie Wellens, the man pulling the strings now. I think his first official game was against Blackburn Rovers, and he did pick up a cheeky win at Boundary Park early in the season, and that was one of our prior to the Plymouth game. That was probably our last defeat uh, before the big stretch. Maybe, just maybe, we can get a win here at Ewood Park and go on another stretch. That would be great, but that's, that's uh, thinking well ahead. Anyway, over the years, the teams have met... Uh, 64 times in all competitions, Blackburn Rovers winning 30 of them, losing 19. Obviously, last time out that these two sides met, what well, as was at Boundary Park, and we were on the receiving end of defeat. However, last five results at Ewood Park looked like this. We have not lost to Oldham in the last five uh, appearances, or, or, or meetings, should I say. Last time that these two sides did meet was in the Football League Trophy, 2016. Rovers and Athletic coming out to a 2-2 draw. Last time Blackburn Rovers won was all the way back in 2001. That was in the League Cup. Uh, and then all the way back, right in the middle there, that was the last time these two sides met in the Premier League. That's right, Oldham were in the Premier League uh, in its early years. Uh, and Blackburn Rovers won that one 1-0. One Let's take a look at the starting 11 for this weekend. I would go like this, Ryan and goal, Nayimbi. I'm hoping, got my fingers and toes crossed, Mogru. I also put in Williams and Bell making Downing sit out. That's a bit controversial, I know, I know. But uh, we've got to have our skipper back in there. I think Williams has done an okay job thus far. And uh, yeah, t put, give t a Downing a bit of a breather. Into midfield, Payne, Smallwood, Bennett, Dak and Graham and Armstrong up front. So Graham was one of the first substitutions. In fact, he was the first substitution in the Plymouth uh, Argyle game. I'm not sure why he did that. The man is on fire. Okay, he had a rusty 30, 45 minutes, but the whole 11 had a rusty 45 minutes. So I think it was a bad call taking off Graham. So I'd get him right back in the thick of things and hopefully he can find his scoring boots on Saturday. Payne, again, I'm throwing all dice at this bad boy, all attacking options straight off the bat. Obviously, it does leave you some options with Nuttall, Samuel, and maybe Antonison if he's fit and available, uh, and Travis and all that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, go with your best, your best attacking point, uh, bunch of players because you need to get a win here, and a comfortable win would be great. I'm hoping Blackburn Rovers will put four or five past Oldham this weekend and actually put turn on the style a little bit and actually give the give the division a bit of a wake up call and say, okay, yeah, we stumbled up last weekend, but we're back now. We've got our focus back in. Back in the right zone. Yes, the unbeaten streak may have gone, but we're going to start a new one right here, right now at Ewood Park. That's the mentality we've got to instill in these 11 players and the boys on the bench. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, Shrewsbury, Wigan, uh, one of them, if not both of them, stumble this weekend. And maybe we can take advantage of that. And actually, in theory, there's a possibility that we could get second place back, albeit for only a couple of days. But, uh, yeah, it's going to have to start this weekend. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics for Blackburn Rovers. Top goal scorer right now, still Bradley Dack. 
I'm not sure why Sky has still got him in a, in a Gillingham shirt. That needs to get sorted out. Danny Graham's in there with 12 goals. Mulgrew's in there with 11. And Dominic Samuel's in there with 8. As for the discipline, Small has got 9. Bennett's got 7. Williams has got 6. And Evans has got 5 yellow cards into the Reds. Bennett, unfortunately, he's on top of the pops here with two Reds. one has got one. And Samuel has one. Into the form book. These are the last five games for Blackburn Rovers. Obviously, top of the pops right there is that shit stain result up against Plymouth Argyle. Still licking our wounds. In fact, they've been a right ter uh, terror for us this season. Obviously, back at Ewood Park, uh, they forced a 1 1 draw with us. And that Gladwin is still burns a hole in my noggin, uh, as I can't believe he screwed up that opportunity. Anyway, they did a number of us at their own place. So, Plymouth have the bragging rights over Rovers. For the next, I don't know how many years, I'm not sure. I'm hoping we don't have to play them again next season. Because uh, I'm hoping that we're going to be in the championship and these boys are going to be in League One. No disrespect to them. Bef uh, before that, we took on Warsaw. That was on 30th of January. We won 3-1. That was our last match at Ewood Park. Hopefully, we can put on a, a similar display this weekend against Oldham. Before that, also at Ewood Park, we took on Northampton. Another side that's struggling. And they managed to force a 1-1 draw before that. Saturday, 20th of January, 2-1 away victory at Fleetwood. And all the way back Saturday, 13th of January, that big one, that most important one, 3-1 victory over Shrewsbury Town. Take a quick look at our, how Oldham will line up this weekend. Placid in goal, Dunmargan, Gerrard, Brian, Mwambi, Fanny, Gardner, Pringle, Byrne. I think that's, is that the old uh, Loney that we had from Manchester City? Uh, it could be. Davis and Holloway up front. Um, so they also have Ian Doyle. He's, uh, he was on loan with Oldham. He then went back to his uh, parent club, but now he's returned on loan. So he might feature in there uh, somewhere. Also, hot off the press, I believe uh, Christian Benteke's brother has just signed for... And that's, that's not a lie. It's, not, it's, 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 it's truth. Uh, he has signed for Oldham this weekend. So he may also feature... Um, one way or another, probably from the bench. And that, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, he had trials at Crystal Palace. Uh, obviously, he's not as good as the big bad boy Belgian who is on Crystal Palace's books. But still, it's an option. Uh, his record does, is not as is nowhere near as good as his brother, obviously. But uh, it, it does provide food for thought. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. Like I said, Doyle, top goal scorer, 15 goals. Davis, not far behind with 13 Brin's in there with seven, and Holloway's got five. Into the discipline, Gardner's got ten yellows. Brin's got nine, Gerald's got seven, and Brian has six. Into the reds, Doyle's got one, Wilson's got one, Edmonton's got one, and Fanny has got one. As for the last five results, they look like this. Last time out at Boundary Park, Oldham picked up a 2-1 home win against playoff-chasing Bradford. And that actually result cost uh, Stuart McCall, I think that's his name, his job. Uh, before that, they lost to Plymouth Argyle, so we have something in common. And they also lost at home. Before that, they lost to Shrewsbury Town in the Czech Trade Cup. Uh, before that, Saturday 20th of January, they lost 3-0 to Peterborough at uh, Peterborough's ground, at, which I think is London Road, that's right. And all the way back, 17th of January, they won in the Czech Trade, beating Leicester City's under-21 side. So a mixed bunch of form, 1-1 one, one out of the last five. But that last one is quite a, a, an important one. Obviously, Bradford form team. It's at home. They're, they're away form. I'm not too sure how good it is. But really, really, Rovers need to be doing a number on Oldham. Uh, obviously, just the three points. That's all that really matters. A 1-0 would be fine. But really, I'd like to see a, a commanding performance. One that's got four or five goals would be, would be absolutely great. And actually put a statement of intent to the rest of the division. And maybe just maybe Shrewsbury will crumble a little bit. And we're going to actually just take a look at who they'll be playing this weekend. Before we talk a bit more, Shrewsbury take on Plymouth Argyle at their place. So hopefully Plymouth have got the bit between the teeth from uh, from last weekend. And they take it to uh, Shrewsbury and give it to give them a game. Uh, as for Wigan, they're away at Southend. Again, another club. Uh, that's not doing too good at the moment. They recently got rid of Phil Brown, always on gardening leave or whatever. So their uh, their form must be all over the chop. Uh, so I'm not really focused on the Wigan right now. And yes, it would be nice to, to go up as champions. In fact, right now I just want to go up promotion, automatic promotion. I don't want to. I just don't want to deal with the playoffs. Um, but right now, focusing 100% on Shrewsbury and getting that second spot. 
And in order to, to start getting things right, they need to stumble a little bit this weekend and we need to get maximum points, three points uh, at home against Oldham. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. I know it's been a little bit of a ramble and a bit of a rant. Uh, but what have the fans been saying on social media? Well, to be honest with you, not much. So I've added over to the BRFCS forum and I've got a few comments from them boys. Let's take a look. Dally Daddy said this, well, after Saturday's disappointing result, we have to go for it this weekend. My, tree, my team would be Raya, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Bell, Smallwood, Bennett, Armstrong, Dak, Payne, and Graham. If Mulgrew isn't fit, then Williams. Now, he's got pretty much the same side that I would. In fact, that formation's pretty much as you would uh, expect. Uh, the only change is Downing. I've decided to drop Downing. Controversial, yep. And uh, have Williams and Mulgrew. Obviously, if Mulgrew is not ready, uh, Downing will be in the book. So not far off it, study boy. As for Arbitrio, Arbitro, yeah. Another hard physical game in which Mowbray just has to get the balance right between his artists and soldiers. The game at Oldham was probably the lowest point of the season when we were outplayed and outfought by a st distinctly average team who simply rose to the occasion. Hopefully Mulgrew, Mulgrew will be back to steady, steady a jittery defence and get us on the front foot. We will score goals, I'm sure, but clean sheets will give us the best chance to catch the top two. Like the optimism, Ben H. Ben said this, a must win at home, no reason to not go all out attack. Can't wait for Lenahan to come back in alongside Mulgrew. I think the game will be too close for both. Do not rate Williams one bit at centre back. I would much rather have a specialised under 23 centre back. Now his lineup is a little bit weird. He's gone for Raya, Nayimbi, Downing, Wharton, who is out on loan, Bell, Smallwood, Bennett, Dak, Payne, Graham, and Armstrong. Besides that little gaff of having Wharton in there, maybe he just didn't realise that he was on loan at Lincoln. It's not a bad side. In fact, it's it's pretty much like the like the other chaps one. Moving forward. So Tom Phil said this. It was a bit of a rivalry back in the day, so no surprise if some of them are having a pop or two. Uh, he said something else there, but it does not make sense. Hopefully we'll return the favour as we owe them. We usually get a good reaction after defeat. Last Saturday's game can be filed firmly in the bottle job column by manager and players like the away fixtures at Oldham and South End. They come around every now and again, probably on the back of complacency setting in, so it might not do any harm if things are shook up. We cannot stroll to promotion. We have to attack. Kick and punch every game from now on. So no excuses for not at least having a good go in this. But in true Rovers styles, it won't be easy. Rovers 2, Oldham 1. He's predicted a, a healthy crowd of 13,000. Meanwhile, Rovers fan 99 said this. One loss. Uh, so change to a new formation that takes a lot of adapting to. With two fullbacks at centre-back. I think he's referencing someone else. Uh, but his formation and, and lineup is like this. Raya, Naimbi, Lenhan, Mulgrew, Bell, Bennett, Smallwood, Payne, Dak, Antonison, and Graham. Uh, and go for the throat, he says. Um, and this fella, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on board with Jim MK2. He said, I don't want to see Antonison in a Rover shirt again. The lad offers very little. Well, okay, it's a bit harsh. It's a bit harsh. I'm not, I'm not that on board. Uh, I just don't think he's uh, he needs to start. I think he's a good player to come off the bench. In fact, he could he does have his he does have his uses. Antonson he does run his legs off and he chases balls that are usually lost causes and he can actually keep them alive. So he does have his uses. He's not prolific in front of goal. I want to see Armstrong get a goal. The boy has has been trying, and unfortunately. They've just not they've just not landed right for him. The game against Walsall, he could have had two hat tricks for crying out loud. In Plymouth, I think he had the only decent opportunities for Rovers. Um, so the boy needs a goal. He needs to start. I play him alongside Danny Graham because the the man's on fire. I'm not the biggest fan of Antonison, um, but he does have his his um, his place in the squad. Um, it's obviously right now I I don't see him starting. I, I just I feel he would be better from the bench aka in the style of Dominic Samuel and Joe Nuttall. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for Blackburn Rovers and Oldham Athletic. Here are three of them. This is a bonus striker edition. Take a look at this fella, Matt Derbyshire. Obviously, we all remember him. Uh, he went on to pastures new. He went all over the place, it looks like. He even played for Oldham Athletic in his time. The Dynamic Finn or something like that. Shefki Kuchi. Yep, formerly of Oldham. There he is with the captain's armband. Looks a bit on the old uh, heavy side too. And there he is in Blackburn Rovers. And we wrap it up with this fella, Paul Dickoff. I think he might even managed Oldham for a stage. But he was also on the books of Blackburn Rovers. Now, if, 
If you want to check out a full list of players who have played for Blackburn Rovers and Oldham Athletic, head over to my WordPress site. Details in the description below. In the list, you'll be able to see some of the players that we covered in the away tie at Boundary Park, as well as others that I have yet to feature. So if you're a little bit squeamish, folks, close your eyes now, because Cast the Cat is back to predict this weekend's match between Blackburn Rovers and Oldham Athletic, and I'm afraid it's not a pretty one. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I uh, just want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you've not checked out that forum, make sure you do so. Maybe you can feature in a future episode of a preview or review show by whacking in one of our cheeky comments. And I'll, uh, I'll use it in the next episode or not. So in order to get the promotion party back on the calendar, Blackburn Rovers need to get back on the right track. And in order to do that, they need to start with a win against Oldham Athletic. It could be a cheeky 1-0 uh, uh, win via our own goal, or it could be a 6-0 stuffing. It doesn't really matter. A win is crucial. It doesn't matter what happens in Shrewsbury. It doesn't matter what happens in Wigan. You know, all that is afterthought. First and foremost, and what is paramount, is the three points. So let's get behind the boys, cheer them on this weekend, and let's hopefully get across the line and get the win. And we'll talk more about the rest in the review show. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.